Stairmaster swimming, tennis, run, walk track, aerobics, and racquetball. So make your resolutions now at the Dingle Athletic Club. Tune in Monday night, March 11th at 6.30 p.m. as the Janesville League of Women Voters and Jones Intertable bring you the Janesville City Council and Janesville School Board Candidate Forum. You will have an opportunity to see where each candidate stands on the issues that are important to you. It all starts at 6.30 p.m. with the candidates vying for seats on the Janesville School Board, followed at 7.30 p.m. with the Janesville City Council candidates. The forums will be replayed on the following date. Tune in March 11th on Jones Intertable, Channel 20. Gentlemen, 
The last time we played, we were up at by 20 at the end of the third. And the uh, Purple Knights came to cut it to four. Sovo may have to now, they may have to try to free him up a little more for these shots like this. That's a three if he gets it. He's, Everyone. Been, he's been short all afternoon. About four inches short all afternoon. Dave Jackson, or Jimmy Jackson. Jackson having a scoring battle with his buddy Ben Berlowski. That gives Jim Jackson 21. And right now... Well, I think it's, you know, it's getting on the verge now where they're going to have to shoot these threes. They're going to have to make things happen. Blocking foul against Berlowski. Good call. Ben Berlowski will get called with the foul. Look at, you know, Jeff Stovall standing right in front of us. He doesn't have a bead of sweat on him anywhere. He's not even breathing. <laughs> He's an athlete. Man. Gafontini in the paint. Gets it snuffed. Gets it back and gets it to Chauncey Mason who fires one up. Chauncey Here didn't follow come. his shot that time and they need the big guy to follow it. Oh, got to go on Levy. Jeff Stovall goes in the mic to block but he gets some foul. So Stovall will pick up a foul. Bring Tim Cole with six seconds. Yeah, that foul was called on Levy. Yes, it was. His first. Well, Tim Cole goes to the free throw line. He had seven points in the first half, has yet to score in the second with six seconds to go in the third quarter. And look at this. The Purple Knights have not scored in the past minute and 49 seconds. Well, uh, that's a credit to the team's number two ranked team, the Jamesville Craig Cougars. They're a fine, fine club, and really showing it uh, in the second and third quarter. They outscored Deloitte 25-19 in the second quarter, and they continue to barrage here. Wade Hodgkinson checks in for the Cougars. 14 points so far, Craig, in the third quarter for Beloit. Tim Cole. It's Tim Nine. You can see uh, number 22, Damian Evans, coming in the ball game, and Kirk Owens will check in as well. Going to give this big guy a little bit of rest. Six seconds to go in the quarter. And now Bob Suter gr literally grabbing, <laughs> grabbing number 55, Tim Hunt, to try to get him in the game, and he couldn't make it. Levy. Oh, it would have counted if it would have gone, but it did not. And the score at the end of three. The Gray Cougar 65. The Purple Knight 47 will be back with the fourth quarter in a moment. You're watching the Jones Intercable High School Game of the Week. In today's complex and ever-changing world, knowledge is power, and power is money. But where can you get the knowledge you need to increase your earning potential? At Blackhawk Technical College. Blackhawk Tech has over 45 degree programs to choose from, in fields ranging from aviation to business. Whatever your interests, they have a program to fit your needs. Register today by calling 757-7710 or 756-4121. Blackhawk Technical College, where learning means earning. Dial. Warmth. Sheep. Sassy. You too can have it all. The Ford Atkinson Fur Company. Highway 26 South, Ford Atkinson. Welcome back to Craig High School. Ready to begin this fourth quarter of action. The Craig Cougars holding a commanding 65-47 points lead. Well, Craig, when you don't rebound, it's a sign that either you're not getting on the boards or the other team is on fire. That quarter, Beloit had zero rebounds, seven for the Cougars. That's because Craig virtually almost every time they shot, scored. Kevin Speth will pick up his fourth. Jeff Stovall will go to the free throw line. Good penetration that time, and Stovall, he, you know, I think he wants to take over a little bit and penetrate, either draw the foul or get the bucket. He's going to have to do that. Big lead. 27-14, Craig outscored Beloit in the third quarter. Coach Bob Suter at the end of the last quarter was trying to get a substitution and trying to get Hunt in. And uh, 
They couldn't hear each other, and <laughs> Bob grabbed it. Well, he, I thought he was going to rip his jersey off. I mean, he tried to he pulled him right out of his seat. You can still see the wrinkles on, on, <laughs> Kevin Hunt, or on Kim Hunt's shirt. And Hunt won't mind a bit, not for the victory. Still, of course, Cougars have not uh, put this one away. Beloit made a run last time at him. 13 in the game for Stovall. Nobody on Jackson. Boy, All the way down. I mean, he might as well have been on the court by himself. 23 for Jim Jackson. He ties Berlowski for the game scoring lead. Oh. Hacked by Berlowski. Yeah. Good call. Stovall is doing what he's got to do. He's taking over. He's the athlete. But he's got to convert from the line when he gets there. And the Cougars will be content. They certainly don't want to stop the clock and let him walk to the free throw line and make baskets, no doubt about that. But the Cougars will be very content just to play even. I mean, even just a little bit less than even. They've got an 18-point lead. That's right. Six out of Stovall's last eight points have ran from right here from the line. I have to commend the officials tonight. We mentioned their names before, Jim Braunschweig and Myron Klug. They have kept this game under control and called a fine basketball game. Uh, I think they've done a remarkable job today with two high-flying clubs like this. I haven't seen many calls that I disagreed with. And for me, that's unusual, Chris. <laughs> they've done a, just a superb job. Give them a raise. Missed free throw by Stovall. Cougars now, we'll see if they take a little air out. Heck no, go with it. Belowski. Belowski rings up three. 26 in the ball game for General Ben Belowski. 20 point Cougar lead. You know, just that quick, this was a ball game for a while and then uh, they just took over. Basket will count, Glass gets it, foul will go against number 55, Tim Hunt. Chris Glass gets the steal, gets the ball, gets the basket, goes to the free throw line. Three points in the game for Glass, that was his first steal goal, that layup. Tim Cole, or I'm sorry, Tim Hunt will get the foul. And apparently he dropped the ball and it rolled into the lane. And Gene Van Gelder watching the side, not a not an argument there. He knew it. Levy, man-to-man -man press against Jim Jackson. And that'll be offense. No, nope. no doubt about it. Good, very good move. I, you know, Levy thought he was set up. He said, boy. And he got straight up and down. Good call. We're going to have a timeout. We'll keep it here again. Coach Bob Suter is just looking at the ceiling. You know, they got an 18-point lead. They don't have to foul. They just hold the ball, play their game, and things will be fine. Well, check this out. 30 points combined for Ben Berlowski and Jim Jackson in the second half, Strickby. Up, You know, if you look at that, Jim Cole has scored the only other points in the second half with two free throws. So, I mean, these guys have just taken over. They're playing five-on-two basketball right now. And David Jackson, the other tandem, there's Bob Suter explaining to his team and saying, gentlemen, we're going to do it my way because I'm the coach and I'm going to tell you what to do. Didn't Sinatra say that? Yeah. Let's do it my way. My way. I think Elvis Presley did too. Well, I think Presley took it from Sinatra. Yes. Either way. <laughs> and now we're going to say Suter. We'll send him that record in the mail. 6.51 to go in the game. The Beloit Purple Knights trail. 70 to 52. And they will have the basketball. The credit to these athletes, too, to this juncture, and we'll say that, this ball game has been very cleanly played by both teams. Uh, they have risen to their athletic ability and put the other things aside. Both clubs doing a super job. Levy gets it blocked. And Chris Glass will get called for undercutting. Backing in to get the rebound. Now the Purple Knights still have two fouls to give before Craig goes to the free throw line. And now Gene Van Gelder really working one of the officials. I don't quite know what it's about, but he does. <laughs> well, Gino's willing to 
do what he can to get what he can. Well, 18 down. Uh, they're going to have to certainly get a few right here. And somebody has to. Uh, he, Wait, nobody's stepping up on Jim Jackson. And I don't know if the strategy point. is to give him his points. If that's the strategy, it's working. He's got 25. Jim comes people up there and he, he just doesn't understand. Nobody's coming out. What, yeah. are, they, what do they think? He's just, he's going to miss? This kid <laughs> averages 26 points a game during the season. He's a big eight conference's leading scorer. You better sure as heck have somebody in his face. Cole gets the loose ball after a block by Tim Hunt. Jim Jackson. There he goes again. Look at it. Oh, there's somebody stepped up on him, but it was too late. He was already underneath, and they could do nothing but foul him. Glass. Where the foul comes from. Glass. That's four on Glass. You know, they, they again, Trig, they let him get the baseline. He skated 15 foot along the baseline, reverse layup before anybody even picked him up. He's a fine basketball player. Maybe you know, he's just too quick. I don't know. And this is a, a real tribute to this team. At the beginning of the year, they won their games. They won some games ugly. But they started to get their rhythm about midway through the season. And they have been improving every game. And the, the, the balance of the Cougar team, the guys come off the bench and play their role so well. And we'll, at least I'll make a little prediction here. This team will be a factor in the state tournament this year. You know, they're not going to get uh, stopped again. And, and they will be a big factor up there. Now, what that means, I don't know. But they're going to be a big factor in the state meet. 27 now for James Jackson. And Jim had six points in the first half. I mean, you could be talking two players with 30, Berlowski and Jackson, if they keep the scoring. Stovall. Just, his range is just not, look at this steal, though. What athletic ability. Look at this. Oh, my gosh, that was over the corner of the backboard. <laughs> He's some ball player. Yeah, you might, you could say that. He just can't, you know, right now he's being forced to do a lot on his own. He's got to get a little more help now in the last five and a half. Cole gets it to Pier. The foul is going to be on, on Pier and Boom. Yeah, he went right into his leg. Bob Suter wanted an elbowing call against Boatner. He, he said elbow, elbows were thrown, but the official didn't see it that way. Damian Evans in the game for Beloit. Boatner. Chauncey Mason yeah, gets Chaun the layup. Chauncey won't miss many of those. Good offensive board. Gives him 12 tonight. 20-point lead for the Cougars. Cougars now being pressured a little bit by the Knights, but that's no trouble breaking it. And another foul. Kieran Boom gets fouled. They'll have it on the side. Oh, maybe that. No, that will put him in the bonus. Uh, Damian Evans sent him the line. Kirk Owens now will come back in and give it a final five-minute effort for Gene Van Gelder. There's Kirk. Can't say enough about Jim Jackson tonight, though. 27 points. Well, you know, he and Berlowski, 53 points and two. They're, you know, Beloit has 54 trade. Berlowski and Jackson have 53. They're being outscored by the whole Beloit team by one. And there's Berlowski with the rebound. Tim Coles will shoot three. Boy, they're, I tell you, they're going for the buried job now, though. They're not letting any air out of it. That's 12. They're not letting a thing go. Levy. Spin move. Going to say travel. He stepped out of bounds. I think that might have been a get even call. I think he charged. <laughs> now the pressure. Man-to-man -man pressure. And foul will go against Levy as he reaches in. You know, there's Gene Van Gelder, and he says, gosh, you know, what do you do? Your players have given it their all tonight. Uh, what do you do against talent like the Cougars? Not much. His strategy to slow the ball down worked for the first half. Went into the half, into the locker room, and you know what, I know what Suter said to his team. The gentlemen, we have the leading score in the conference on our team. Why don't we let him have the ball? You know, and when we did a little rap at the end of the first half, that's 28 now for Jim Jackson. We said Jim Jackson had six points, and I said he's a little off his seat tonight. Uh, I don't know if you heard me. He must have got mad because he's got 22 points in the second half alone. Zone defense yet by the Cougars. 
Stovall. There he hit it. Boy, he's been called. That's a three. He's been called tonight. He has not had his usual fine game, even though he has 17 points. Cuts the lead to 21. Four minutes to go. The Cougars can wait it out. Now they can milk a little here and look for the good shot. They're not going to. They're going for three after three. Boatner will get fouled. And Berlowski will pick up his fourth. And not a very wise foul, I would say, by the Cougars. You don't want to put him on the line, stop the five. Gene Van Gelder's at the scoring table. And he says, I want something right here. And I didn't quite hear his word, what he said. He said somebody back behind him is throwing or said something. Well, I don't he's know. upset about something. Yeah, he's in the Beloit stands. It can't be that, but he's pointing it. He's pointing at somebody here. And we're kind of checking it out. You can see it. There's Bob Scooter standing there. He's kind of... I don't know what, what the concern is. Gene Van Gelder said he wanted athletic director Don Swanson right here. And I don't know what he's... He's pointing at somebody or something in the stands, Trig. And I, now Don Swanson's getting somebody out of there. Well, either way, we'll take a break and we'll be back in a moment. The score, 78 to 57. You're watching the Jones Digger Cable High School Game of the Week. I originally decided to come to UAC because of the low cost tuition and it was very convenient for me to live at home and attend classes here. A lot of the things that I've taken are above the level that Madison requires. And since it's part of the UW system, everything they make sure that everything will transfer within the state and a lot of colleges out of the state also. Learning doesn't improve with distance. Call UW Center Rock County today for more information. Well, there's still a delay here from the Craig High School Gymnasium. And I don't know what it is. It's a fan or something. Yeah, it, it says something. Well, it is a fan who's been sitting behind Van Gelder. And he, uh, we talked to a few fans on the break, and they said he's a big Craig fan. And he's given the boys team a little business down there. And Gene, rightfully so, if this is what's going on, he's saying, get him out of here. We don't need him. And the police officers are going to take him out. But there's They're three, ask him. There are three officers. If they can't get him out and get this game going, and we better call the National Guard. They're coming home. And they're going to ask him to leave the game. And apparently, and the other Beloit fans are cheering, so they must have heard some things. The fans around him are applauding, so apparently the guy has said some things that were yeah. inappropriate or something. Either way, it's, again, it takes away from the game. It's such a such a sad situation. The well, Craig Cougars are playing so well. And you know, and Trig, to add to that, both teams on the court have played with honor and respect. The Purple Knights have just been, you know, and there he goes. The Purple Knights have just been playing a super game and so have the Cougars. And you don't need some fan out there uh, causing trouble. It doesn't it? Isn't that the way it usually is? It usually comes from the stands, not from the athletes. Such a, uh, well, basketball is a game, you know? Jimmy Boatner, Boatner. that's number eight in the contest for Boatner as we're finally back underway after a delay. 404 to go in the contest. The Purple Knights down by 20. Now yeah, just under that, as you said, that four minute mark and the Purple Knights doing everything they can to slap that ball away, travel, and a good job by Boltner that time out front. He forced it. Into the game, number 22, Damian Evans comes in. Kirk Owens will sit down. Kirk is exhausted. He has just really, really put out a super effort and he's got nothing left as he goes to the bench. Now the Cougars have fallen back into a zone. And Damian Evans will take the shot and get it. Now he got inside, that gives him four. Cut to the token, 18. Token pressure. And I'm sure now that they will look for, uh, the Cougars will look for the good shot. There's a foul. Evans will get called for the foul. No choice, they've got no choice at this juncture. The Cougars shoot foul shots so well. Tim Cole's got 12 on the night. Yeah, what do you do? You know, you it's like jumping from the frying pan into the fire. You can let them play and try to steal it, or you can follow them. Then they go to the line and kill you with free throws. Tim Cole, fine season for this young gentleman. 
He has 13 in the game. He's the only player other than Jim Jackson and Berlowski to score in the second half. You know, and the only, the only time the Cougars faltered a little bit during the year, and they obviously didn't falter much, they won them all, <laughs> is when this young gentleman, Tim Coles, and Ben Berlowski were injured. That's right, and this is a well-oiled unit. They are a well-knit unit, and you take apart any of it, and uh, it, it will hurt the hole. Boatner misses the shot. Jim Jackson with the board. 3.15 to go. 20-point lead. Nothing is too much for the Knights, so, you know, they can run 10 in a row real quick, so they're going to play it smart. Uh, another, you know, just such a, so well prepared. <laughs> and believe it or not, Kieran will beat Chauncey Mason. He went right around him and over him. Four for Pierenbull. Evans gets it into Mason. And no foul. Dev, Dev, uh, Jim Jackson stepped away and gave him the two. 2.35 to go. 30 points in the contest for James Jackson. Oh, Stovall with almost a steal. And then he will foul from behind. Yep. Throw it up his back. Jeff Stovall will pick up his second personal foul tonight. We keep saying tonight, it's afternoon. <laughs> Hard to believe we're playing basketball in the afternoon. And of course, another one coming up after this. You see those Parker girls against the Steve Park. I don't know if we're going to have any voice left after these two contests. Both going to be beauties, I'm sure. This one already has been. 82-62, Ben Berlowski trying to pad the lead. As we said earlier, just a moment ago about Tim Cole. Earlier in the season, Berlowski with an Achilles injury and he had to rest for a while but has come back tonight and just played an outstanding game 28 points if he can get another bucket he and jim jackson will both have 30. i wonder the last time that's happened to a cougar team with two players scoring 30. levy levy has been quite silent and the offensive scoring tonight that gives him seven Here and boom. Jim Jackson. My goodness, he missed. <laughs> Double dribble there. Uh, Keith Levy comes flying down, jumps into our equipment, but he's okay and throw the people on the floor. Into the game, Chris Glass. That was a, an interesting double dribble. Nicholson had it, dribbled it, picked it up, dribbled it again, and no call. Right now, Gene Van Gelder looking down the bench. Uh, he's going to give some, some new guys. Yeah, he's going to give some more people some playing time now. McAtee is going to come in. Dave Jackson up ahead, and he'll throw it away. And I know Bob Studer just, you know, Bob just doesn't relax. He's just, <laughs> he's very, he turns, he's not. Bob's got to watch his heart. I mean, he's not a young gentleman anymore. He's a gentleman, but he's not a young gentleman. He, he turns the dog <laughs> new and shorter, and I thought he was going to cry. Bob, come on, you're up by 20. <laughs> Hey, you know exactly. Every one of these games is like a practice. Nice round of applause and I, coming. And I'll tell you what Bob Sue is thinking. Nobody's going to rob us from a trip to state this year. We're going to get up there. and You've got to stay with it. I mean, if you ease up on your guys just for a second, you know, things can happen. You can lose ball games. He wants them on the money every single ball game all the way to the finals. That's what he wants. 144 to go. The Cougars by 20. This is a part of the game that, you know, a lot of people don't realize. This is a weave on top, well, it's working well. To run, a, to run a delay where you're holding the ball, not trying to score. <laughs> he went for the slam of jamma. Bob Suter's going to get him out of the game, I believe. He went well, for no, the jam. Yeah, he is. Boy, and I, that, that would make me concerned, too, to lose your leading yeah. score. Well, he, that would have put the Craig fans on the ceiling. I mean, they'd have went crazy. That would have been the icing on the cake. But Sutter's you know, already got a sub ready. And I don't think there was any intent involved here, but Jeff Stovall went over to to say to, to Jackson, hey, no, no, no harm intended. Oh, no, absolutely. He has the right to block that jam. And you have the right to go up and block it. Either way, Jim will miss his free, free throw. 
Number 50 for the Purple Knights, Brent Cole comes in, and Jeff Stovall will sit down. And a nice round of applause for Stovall out of the Boyd fans as he has played an outstanding ball game, fine athlete, football field. And I'm, I'll bet he's a track man, too. I got a gut feeling. I don't know that for sure. That's 31 points in the contest.